Have you ever logged into a Microsoft 365 service using a device code? It's a super convenient way to authenticate when you're working with a system that doesn't have a web browser. But what if I told you that the same method could be used against you in a phishing attack, one that bypasses MFA and hands attackers a persistent way to access your data? Welcome to today's video where we'll break down how attackers abuse device code flow within Microsoft 365 and more importantly how you can protect yourself and your organization. And this isn't just theory. Microsoft has recently published new findings on Storm 2372, a threat actor suspected to be aligned with Russian interests that has been actively using device code phishing since August 2024 to target governments, NGOs and businesses worldwide. This group tricks users into entering a device code, stealing authentication tokens that let them access Microsoft 365 services. No passwords required. With attacks like these happening right now, it's more important than ever to secure your environment. Let's start with the basics. Device code flow is an authentication method designed for scenarios where you need to sign into Microsoft 365 or Azure, but don't have an interactive UI. So think, PowerShell scripts, CLI tools, or IoT devices. Here's how it works. You initiate authentication from a command line tool or app. You're given a code and told to visit microsoft.com forward slash device login. You enter the code on another device, sign in and authenticate. Once verified, the original device gets an access token to use Microsoft 365 resources. It's simple to use and incredibly useful, but just like any powerful tool, it can be exploited. Now here's where things take a dark turn. Attackers have figured out ways to weaponize device code flow in phishing campaigns. They'll send emails or messages pretending to be IT support or Microsoft, instructing users to visit the legitimate Microsoft device login page and enter a code. But that code, it was generated by the attacker. Once the user enters it and completes authentication, the attacker now has valid access and refresh tokens, meaning they can continue accessing Microsoft 365 services without needing to steal passwords or bypass MFA. No fake login pages, no adversary in the middle proxies, just a simple trick using a real Microsoft service. This technique is used by tools like Token Tactics to automate attacks, giving adversaries access to Microsoft Graph, email, and more without ever needing to re-authenticate. Now for the important part, how do we stop this? The best way to prevent these kind of attacks is by utilizing conditional access. There, we can create a policy that will block device code flow. Now, it's probably safe to assume that the majority, if not all of your end users, do not use device code flow in their day-to-day -day activities, but it's always worth checking first. And you can do this using a simple KQL query in Log Analytics or Sentinel. Once you've reviewed your logs and determined who you can safely block it for, it's just a case of creating the policy. Let's jump into the entry portal and walk through how you would do that. Okay, so here we are in our entry portal and we're just going to head over to conditional access. Uh, we're going to go to policies, create a new policy, and we will name it restrict device code flow. In this case, uh, keep it easy. I'm just going to target it to all users uh, for resources, all, all cloud apps or all resources. And then what we're looking for is underneath the conditions tab, if we head down to authentication flows, and we enable that, we can see here we have device code flow. Uh, so that's the one that we want to check. Authentication transfer uh, actually allows you to transfer authentication from desktop to mobile. That might be something that you probably want to block as well. Uh, so if you do, you can go ahead and check that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. And then in our access controls, uh, we're just gonna change that to block access. And that, is it. So we're going to go ahead and create that policy. 
and that's all there is to it. Now, this is an ideal solution for what will likely be the majority of the organization, but what about those users that do need to use device code flow? This could be developers, admins, or certain users that perform out of the ordinary tasks. Well, this is where we would turn to privileged identity management and specifically PIM for groups. With PIM for groups, we can create a PIM enabled group and then use this group to exclude users temporarily from the blocking conditional access policy. This then allows those users to authenticate using device code flow with that exclusion automatically reverted after a set amount of time, which is perfect for those scenarios. Let's take a quick look as to what that might look like. Okay, so here is our conditional access policy. And if we start by heading over to privileged identity management, we can see here that I have uh, created a, a role enabled group called PIM device code flow exclusion. I've gone ahead and added it uh, as a PIM enabled group uh, within PIM. Uh, and here it is. So this is available for use now. Uh, if I go ahead and select that group, uh, we can see in here, I've uh, got the uh, PIM group settings. If I go ahead and review these. And we're looking at the member settings here. So we can see in this case, I've updated the activation settings so that the uh, maximum duration for activation is two hours. So that means that when an administrator or a user activates this particular role, elevates uh, into this group, they'll be excluded from that conditional access policy uh, for two hours maximum. On activation, we can see here we're using authentication context. So in this case, uh, the, uh, the administrator or the user actually has to uh, do a step up in authentication. And it requires, in this case, a FIDO2 security key. So that's just an example of something uh, something additional you could do in there. And we're also uh, requiring justification on activation because uh, why not? So uh, that's the uh, PIM uh, group configuration. Uh, and then it's just a case of heading back to our conditional access policy. And underneath our user assignments, underneath our exclude tab, we're going to go ahead and add our group into here. So now, anytime one of those users or administrators uh, needs to exclude themselves from device code flow, they would just head over to the PIM portal, activate their role within usually a couple of minutes, they'll be excluded from that conditional access policy. They can go ahead and use device code flow to authenticate into whatever device it is they're authenticating into. Uh, and then that change will be automatically reverted um, via PIM. Uh, the, the user will be removed from the group uh, and that exclusion will be, will be uh, reverted. Hopefully that's given you a good idea as to what device code flow is and that it can be a useful feature. But like any authentication method, it has its risks. By implementing conditional access policies, you can effectively shut down this attack vector and keep your Microsoft 365 environment secure. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, Hit the bell icon to stay updated on the latest Microsoft 365 security tips. Until next time, stay safe.